This is my podcast. My podcast is amazing. Give it a lick. Mm, it tastes just like Nandies. The name of this podcast is Trapped in a Plastic. Bet you didn't see that intro coming. Oh, I have a little blast from the past for the goody peepees. Mm -hmm. Sweet lemonade. Sweet, oh, sweet, sweet lemonade. lemonade. Mm. Welcome yeah. back, goody peepees. Welcome back to the greatest podcast on the earth. That's ever been ever, ever, ever. Deterpit under the pastic. Deterpit under the pastic. <laughs> we may seem a little bit different this episode, but I assure you we're not. It's just that we've spent the last three hours and change, three days, four days, I don't know, a lot of days together. Since Tuesday, in Tuesday afternoon-ish, Yep. and it is now Friday morning. Yeah. So that's a strange... Well, it was an afternoon. I got here like 10. Remember you said you show up at 10, 15 a.m. Okay. It's a round afternoon. Yeah, and it's roughly, you know, it's not 10 a.m., but it's not far it's, from 10 a.m. It's an hour away. So it's, it's, you know, yeah, three full days, 72 hours. Together. Together. Forever. Forever. And we will talk about briefly later why that was. Yes. But just know that coming into this episode, there may be some references that are to things that happened in the last three days that you don't know about. Oh, thanks for oh, this, is a, this is a warning. Okay, this, <laughs> this is, is a warning. Yes. So those references are exclusively for us and right. for, our, for our comedy, not for you. Yeah. <laughs> if you get them, though, that's bonus John Bucks. Okay. Like if I say, let's keep it Italian, these John Bucks. By the way. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. There's uh, we have the bots on it. It's oh, all it's all the, automated. The bots are on it. Yeah. 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 So example, if I say. Why is James crying? Because they just got ducked on. I ain't even lying. Yeah, they just got ducked on. Yeah. And you're going to like, oh, what does that mean? And you're going to put it in the old YouTuber, you know? Yeah. Hit enter. Yeah. And you're going to watch a great music video. Yeah. Or you can just find it linked in the description below or the show notes if you listen to the audio version for our audio listeners. Oh, wow. Look at you doing doing all the laborious YouTube searching. For laborious. That. All right. On to the preamble ramble. Preamble. We have a uh, we had a note from our upstairs editor that said, can you please limit the preamble ramble to two points, one of you each? So, we, we tend to ramble. This is for you, Amber. Ian. What? Ian? What did you randomly say I, Ian I saw for? a word. On Who's this, Ian? I saw a word in this paper that reminded me of the word Ian. If Ian, if you're watching this, what's up, dude? All right. Uh, Ian, says, Ian's like driving to work right now. <laughs> he's like, oh. and he just hears Ian. He's like, <laughs> Yours says Death Wish Coffee. Whoops. Whoops. So in the last episode of the podcast, I told that everybody that I started drinking coffee, which I have my coffee right here. Coffee. And... Um, and my wife got me this Death Wish coffee because I was like, oh, that's badass. Cool. Sounds cool. And then everybody in the comments are like, uh, you realize that that's like the world's strongest coffee, right? And it's got like five times the caffeine of a regular cup of coffee, right? And I'm like, I did not know that. <laughs> it explains a little bit why it makes me so happy. <laughs> uh, I'm not drinking Death Wish right now because I was like, I, I don't know if it's going to give me a heart attack. <laughs> but the weird thing is because I drink so much Diet do. Like it wasn't like it, it hurt me or I felt made me feel bad. I was just like, Pfft. yeah. I mean, considering that you can knock back five and a half dues in one day. Yeah, who drinks five and a half Mountain Dews in one day? <laughs> well, like a like me when I was fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, <laughs> may have did that Tuesday, and I even got here at like ten a.m. Five and a half since ten a.m. It's okay because the next day you 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 pulled it back. Well, yeah, because I brought a twelver. <laughs> Drink like almost and I drank almost half it the first day. I'm like, I gotta slow this train down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is danger territory. This is dangerous territory. <laughs> so anyway, Death Wish Coffee. If this is our last episode, it's because I'm dead. From <laughs> Death Wish Coffee. <laughs> I actually had a Death Wish. I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's in the name. I'm trying to find a name and fucking... that's one of the is that that's the Rodriguez video from Grindhouse Death Wish, right? Or oh, is that, that Tarantino's? Is, that is that one lives in that world that universe yeah they have movies that like are kind of like a similar vibe and death wish is definitely one of them yeah, kurt russell has a car that he murders people with. yeah and he's probably carrying a chainsaw and yeah. has like a fucking machete and a machine gun and yeah machete's another one yeah this is halfway through a conversation yeah about, of something we talked about a day ago about danny trejo <laughs> danny trejo who is on the mass singer oh yeah he's explaining a singer. explaining to amber who danny trejo is 
and the machete. Machete. Okay. Well, glad you're all caught up now. Yeah. Uh, that's 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 my preamble ramble uh, topic, Scott. What what is preamble in your rambly right now? Okay. So shout out to uh, Cody Leach who messaged me this on Instagram. Uh, we're just sitting here working on our thing, me and John, and yeah. I read this message. Doing the Lord's work. Doing the Lord's work, and it's linked to this thing called Miniax Week. And it's, you can check it out at miniaxweek.it. And I was like, okay, this is like a Mini Cooper thing. Like, I sure. get it, right? It's a bunch of Mini Cooper uh, fanatics getting together and fucking driving Mini Coopers. That's, that sounds like something that would happen in yeah. Italy. And because I know that the word Miniac is associated with Mini Cooper lovers. Um, <laughs> not, so. not so. Not <laughs> so. Uh, I opened the link and it was to a miniature painting convention thing of sorts. I don't know if it's exclusively online or if it's also in person events. Um, but I was like, well, I think Vincenzo is teaching there in person. Vincenzo so Celeste. Yeah. yeah. Who is now on Twitch escapes me at the moment. Miniatures Den. Miniatures Den, um, is teaching there and okay. It just feels a little weird. I don't want to, I don't want to be like message anyone that's running this thing and be like, Hey, I own that word. Cause it feels like a douche thing to do. But also at the same time, <laughs> it's like, it's weird to use the name in your event because it implies something about that that I may be involved in either the administration of it, the creation of it, like the the production of it, and I'm not. I had no idea this thing existed until Mr. Mr. Leach here messaged it to me. So you're gonna get an email in your inbox in like this afternoon, <laughs> inviting you f- to be the keynote speaker at, at the yeah. at opening ceremonies for this. <laughs> They're like, look, no pressure, but we named it after you, <laughs> so you have. Well, I to guess come. I have to do it now. By the uh, way, we're not paying for your flight. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this is interesting. By the way, yeah, okay, you're, you're, it's it's. Oh, you know what? It is an in-person event. Otherwise, I don't know why they would specify the fact that it's in Milan. So sure. it's, it's an Italian event. Sure. Um, yeah. So it's, that's awkward. So, yeah, it was just funny to see that. Anyways, so we discussed this. We first when you first showed this to me, I think we both had this response of like, huh, that's uh. I don't know what to think about that. Like, okay, here's my question that I'm generally curious about. I'm curious if they arrived at the word Miniac without knowing my channel, which is a possibility. My channel isn't massive. Um, it's got, I mean, that, but in the miniature world, I feel like it's maybe it's better knowable. I mean, it's enough of a word that nobody around the table, it's when someone's workshopping the name, if somebody says that, that there's nobody around the table, it's like, you know that. That's a thing already. It's a YouTube right? channel. Right? Yeah. Like, I kind of believe somebody would, but I don't think they did because yeah, n- if the, if somebody knew, they'd be like, all right, let's come up with a different name. I would think. Yeah. And, and the reason I think that's probably the case is because the word miniac is like a word that you might arrive at in a vacuum much more quickly than a word like Squidmar or sure. Goobertown, right? <laughs> because miniac is like very like on the nose about how it's related to miniature sure. painting. Um, so yeah, more on the nose and a yes. made up word. Yeah. yeah. I mean, fun fact, I actually dislike that name because of how on the nose it is. Oh. It's like shoving it down your throat. I'll give it's, you, it's I, like, I'll give you Ninjon for a million dollars. No, see, I like Ninjon. <laughs> okay. And this is, this is a preference thing. I am not criticizing anyone, but Miniac for me is one step above the worst kind of YouTube channel name. Which is like explain what you do in the name of your type. Exactly, channel. exactly. I and I, I don't want to say any examples just because I don't want to like be too close to someone's uh, channel name to you know make them feel bad. But this is just a preference of mine, like miniature, uh, putting miniature painting studio or like studios or like video maker or like cha- or like TV or something like that in your name. It's just like you know, obviously, like it's a, a name that's like shorter, more concise, and uh, you know. More brandable. Yeah. Yeah, there it like is. Like the guy that we watched a video last night where he refurbishes old tools and doesn't <laughs> talk at all. And I think the name of his channel is... <laughs> it's Hand Tool Rescue. Hand Tool Rescue. <laughs> I don't like that name. Okay? Yeah. Great channel. Yeah. Love his videos. I don't like the name. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I'm I like glad it. you remembered it because I knew it was something like that, but yeah. I couldn't remember what the name was. Yeah. So, like, I like Ninjan a lot. It's short. It's sweet. It, it is totally unique. No one's going to randomly name their convention it. Unless they are into ninjas and their name is John. Yeah, all the, all, everyone that likes ninjas that their name is John are the ones invited to this convention. <laughs> yeah. And then they wouldn't invite me. That would be the ironic part. <laughs> They'd yeah. be like, uh, sorry, sir, we, uh, you didn't get an invite. I'm like, I meet all the criteria. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm a ninja and I'm a John. Uh, anyways, yeah, that was weird. Okay, we can move on now because talking about this is making me feel like a dick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, while we paint it. Why don't we paint a Reno, Scotty? Um, I didn't paint a goddamn thing, but I assembled but a lot of shit. Assembled. And I put a lot of dudes on popsicle sticks. Uh, tongue, oh, depressors. Uh, tongue depressors. Sorry. Uh, tongue depressors. Sorry. Sorry. I called these things popsicle it, oh, sticks. Oh, it says popsicle stick on the packaging. It says though. popsicle stick family. It's a little family. Look at this. Is, you know what you do with this? You depress tongues. You go. Oh, ah, ah, ah. You put it in his mouth. Okay. So yeah, I, 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 oh God, I bought some of these, uh, these tongue depressors. John's gonna get called in the middle of the podcast. How very professional of you! Wow, mine's on airplane mode. It isn't. I lied. I could totally get a call right now. I got a call. This it was a number I, I didn't recognize. Okay, we should have picked it up and like had the conversation on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I put together a uh, eighty some model Dark Yeldar army. Um. It's a lot of models. It's a lot of miniatures. I put them all on tongue depressors uh, in like units with uh, the color scheme that I plan to paint them on the bottom of the stick so I can keep everything straight. Um, and so I can hold them all easily because none of them are on bases mm -hmm. at the moment. So the plan is to do the airbrushing step for the bases and for the models and then to glue them to the bases to make them easier to paint afterwards. Also because they wouldn't last that long on double-sided tape. Right. Eventually they start to like little, do a little well, teeter. Do the lean. Yes, the lean. Uh, yes, the lean. Uh, uh, I think we talked about last episode about your plan with the bases to do them all separate so you can airbrush them. Yes. Cool. Yes. And then just throw the minis on there. That's part of the, one of the ideas for efficient army painting. Oh, is that going to be efficient? I'm workshopping it. <laughs> <laughs> you got all those bases done? Uh, no. So I have to put dirt on a bunch of bases still. Um, but then that... That's the very last step before I could start painting. So while Scott was spending the last three days uh, building his dildars, dildars, I was deciding. Hold on, hang on, I, I couldn't decide there if I had to poop or not. <laughs> um, I was it painting was like, a miniature. It was like a choose your own adventure, yeah, right? You arrived yeah. at the crossroads, and you're like, poop or not poop. And you chose the not poof. Right? I, I think I just ran down the freaking woods line in between. It. <laughs> I think that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be too far from either path. <laughs> okay. Um, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah, this is a terrible idea. <laughs> okay. There's a reason no one take. There's no path there. There's a reason there's not a path there. <laughs> so while you're doing that, I was uh, spent the last three days, roughly eight to ten hours a day. I think, maybe not that long in each of the days. Whatever. Uh, Call it seven to nine. Painting a display model that will be the box art for a mini that Scott is creating. Uh, it is an elf. And if you are a keen watcher, you'll have seen the concept art for the elf in a video that I have made. It's the end of your video. I think I put out at the end of 2020. So I painted one of those. Yeah, that was good. And I painted, I'll painted. i paint one, and then someone else painted the third one. Yeah, and so there's you know, three models, three elves. And I, yeah, overall, it was pretty cool. It was a pretty cool experience. Mm -hmm. I never tried to paint that in that short a period of time to be to look like better than like 50% ball sack, you know? <laughs> and that was, like, that, that was like 75, 80% ball sack, that paint job. You know? Yeah. Because I, I couldn't go... A hundred percent in no. the, those three days. No. I probably could have, but you I would need to be not here be for like seven days. Yeah, I feel like. Yeah, at least I would. And it's rough doing all that in such. You know, I was going to say something else, but I can't say that, so I'm not going to say that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you caught uh, yourself. I caught myself. There are some I said secrets it. we are withholding uh, due because uh, of the nature of the video. Yeah, uh, but you all you'll, you'll figure it out soon. You you'll all will be revealed in good time. Um, <laughs> oh, he did the. He's leaning right now. It's just too. That's the path down the middle. He's just too much to it. For our, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're kind of right. For our audio listeners, John just gave me good. You know, just a little forty-five degree lean. Yeah, just uh, let out one of those. Get that everything bagel going. <laughs> rum, rum, rum. Okay, is, we had chicken last night. This fucking podcast is <laughs> off the fucking rails right now. <laughs> what else? Like, I painted? more so than normal. So I painted uh, that, and then also since the last episode, oh, you know what would be really fun? What? 
do not swap me with that or I will swap you with this. Oh, no. Yours has a hook. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yours says finished army. I finished my army. Since our last episode, I had not finished my 40K army. Ooh. Yeah, 40K army that I was going to do in my free time in a week. And that was a Friday, so I still had oh, Friday, I Saturday, questions. Sunday to paint. Okay. I'm sorry. I finished it. That's all I got to say. What? It, yeah, like, I was like, I have questions in the middle of while you were saying something. <laughs> um, you mentioned wanting to... Uh, doing do some extra stuff to the army at the end of the video mm -hmm. um and i was curious what those extra things were and i was curious if you felt proud when you finished it because oh, wow. you said you did in the so video questions you said you did in the video but yeah. i i know for a fact that i oftentimes will do i'll lie in a video <laughs> when i feel like i'm supposed to feel Liar. proud about something and I'm, and I'm not um but that that could be a problem with me exclusively so yeah, i was curious you how you're a, feeling you have a problem um i mean i do <clears throat> when i was done with those there's a reason why at the end of the video i asked I asked the question because I like actually had it to myself first. I'm like, hmm, what would it be cool if I came back to this and did it better? Absolutely. Improved yes. it. The answer to that question is yes. Yeah. I, I think it's because I already had things in my head that I couldn't get to. Yeah. With time constraints. Yeah. And things that I looked at that I wasn't entirely happy with. Um, By the way, I'm saying yes, it'll make a good video. Oh. Not, not yes, you need to do you it. You must. Yeah, yeah, because that's what all the comments said. You must. Oh, jeez. You must. I think that'd be interesting. The concept is interesting. Yeah, and what, what does that look like? How do you? What's that thought process? I thought that that was interesting, and I, I don't, I can probably think of some of the things I thought here. But in response to the question, um, did I actually was I actually really happy at the end? It was amount. It was the difference in experience between finishing up the army. And like I said in the video, like painting everything one at a time and looking at it really close or whatever, it wasn't like a really, like a grabbing paint job. But when I set everything up to take the final shots of everything and mm -hmm. it's a full army together, it really did. I was like, okay, this looks a lot cooler okay. like this. Okay. So cool. like at the table or in your glass cabinet all together, like I was, I was, I was happy with it. Awesome. Um, I want to see it. It looks. I was. I thought it was really cool too. I loved all the. I loved the Delac sub in for the cultist. Thought that was amazing. You know, the bat motifs really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I. I liked it. I liked some of the little bits I did, like the different Night Lord shoulder pads mm -hmm. that made it look a little bit unique. Some of the things I um, want to do different is I, I want to go back and actually put re-emphasize some highlights. I think is a big thing. Um, On what, like specifically? basically anything that was i took the time to highlight and accentuate like mostly like trim and and the actual armor itself and then on the faces to do pointed edge highlighting and i didn't re-highlight any of the gold at all too like there's some points that if i it's not a ton of time or a ton of steps on each model that like really boosts the overall contrast because your highlights kind of pop out a bit more okay so that's a, a real basic thing i want to do some stuff with blood effects on there i just never got around to okay i want to go back in and add some variations um in depth of tone with with an airbrush with inks through an airbrush like some purple on the blue or something like that or yeah like purple in the shadows yeah just yeah. shoot it from below on the armor and right. that can go everywhere it's okay if it's overspray because yeah. it's kind of environmental it's not a bad idea yeah um, and then I, I had considered, and I would be something I probably had to test for and first or not would be like a very thin blue ink through an airbrush around the, the actual blue where the lightning, lightning bolts and stuff are to yeah. boost that a little bit and then go back through with pure white and just hit like the dots of the edges of the bolts. It's yeah. kind of a GW heavy metal kind of style thing. They're, yeah, yeah. they're peaks of their edge highlighting they take like their brightest color and just hit the little tiny corner of it where the two lines meet yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so to do that with the lightning bolts i thought that might be cool might add a little bit of because a little zhuzh. it is it is desaturated i didn't want it to look like ultramarines but i think it might be a little bit overly desaturated sure um which is i think it still looks cool i think without the lightning bolts it would have been hard to read as night lord so, so oh that's so, yeah cool. those are examples of stuff Okay, I'm very excited for those things. If you ever do them, they look pretty cool. I think the red OSL also is a really great thing. It's one of those it's a really nice color. That's Chimera red. Yeah, it's just Chimera red. It's not ink. I wanted to use because you've got a fluorescent FW red, and I wanted to use that. It's not good. 
Oh, because I saw it's they had it at so Michael's. It's translucent. Oh. You need like a bazillion layers for it to not look like pink. Yeah. And it's so easy to like flood something with an airbrush when it's really yeah. be like that. Yeah. You have to be very careful and patient. And the more layers you do, the glossier it gets and the more mm-hmm. fucking spidery it gets. Yeah. It's... Yeah, that, if you want like a really interesting pink, um, it's it's like a really interesting pe- peachy pink that's like fluorescent uh, in like, I don't know, three layers over white. Hmm. It's interesting. It must um, be cool to for a, a skin tone. Possibly. Or like some kind Very of like... vibrant one. So, like I'm, I'm imagining some kind of like synth wavy 80s retro LED. You know what I'm talking about? Mm. Do you see that color? I don't know. It's this weird orangey, reddy color. Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I can picture it in my brain noodle. <laughs> it's in there with the yard pickles. <laughs> <laughs> There's the first one. Um, okay. Now, Sky, you're way too young for this, but back in the golden age of RPGs on consoles, there was the Super Nintendo juggernauts, such as Chrono Trigger and, and Final Fantasy VI and Secret of Mana. I'm sure you've heard of these. I have no idea where this is coming from, so I assume this is for a sponsor. That's right, Scott. This is for Kenji's Quest, a wonderful new board game on Kickstarter right now. And it pays homage and gets all these awesome game mechanics from the golden age of RPGs. Oh, that Kenji's Quest? You mean the one that makes tons of dragon and other monster miniatures that are compatible with other tabletop games? Yeah, that's the one. And we checked out Kenji's Quest and uh, we were pretty hot and bothered by it. So we thought this this sounds like something that we could get behind, and so we made them sponsor this video. <laughs> we made them sponsor it? Yeah, we did. We made them sponsor it. That's how all of our sponsors work. Yeah, it's all back alley tactics. <laughs> <laughs> it has a lot of really cool features, such as... It has some compelling physical components, like potion bottles that you can actually drink from, and we saw that in the video. It was, it was kind of insane. <laughs> yeah. uh, it has treasure chests and an awesome system for equipping your character sheet with weapons and gemstones yeah also your performance in the game and the decisions that you make influence the plot and what happens later that's pretty wild and it has a companion app which is freaking awesome because the game master the game host the person that's running the game they can use that app to display the art show stats during battle and play the soundtrack and more live during the game yeah it keeps everything categorized based on like what part of the instance you're in most importantly it has pretty awesome answers that don't Look like they were designed for a Chinese mobile game that you can even pledge for separately if you think the game is lame. A big thank you to Myths and Miniatures, the maker of Kenji's Quest. And you can click in the video description or show notes below and check out the Kickstarter. Check out some videos and more information, pictures on the game. Or you can go to Kenji'sQuest.com and get even more information about this wonderful Kickstarter. Okay, let's get back to the episode. All right, topic of today is why is mini painting so serious? Why so serious? This was <laughs> nice. This was uh, from one of our patrons, uh, Walter. Walter. Um, and you know, at first, uh, we had a bit of an argument, uh, a friendly argument. We weren't fighting naked or anything. Um, about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not gonna say anything there. Maybe <laughs> about, you hanging <laughs> about whether or not this topic was worth discussing. And I think after a bit. I at least realized that, okay, well, we're talking about it now, so there's something to discuss about it. Maybe not exactly the question, but the nature of the question, why it's even being asked, what what serious means, how, what, is, what does youth mean, you know? What is life? You're right. So it got it got deep. So I, we're like, okay, what the fuck? Like, whatever, dude. <laughs> whatever. Let's have, let's, let's talk about I wanna, it. I want to read out Walter's word for word question in the aggression that he underlines this whole thing with is pretty it's pretty sweet thanks walter oh is this a, is this is this walter uh yeah i got to believe it's walter walter okay i forget their last name walter is so- heidi is walter heidi and- walter sobchek heidi is last name starts with a b doesn't I, it i don't want to like say their last name okay. on the internet oh, oh oh i know it okay okay i remember <laughs> i didn't know if it was that one so i was trying to like Okay. It, all it said was Walter submitted. I assume uh, Walter is, is just a one name. It's like, unimportant. It's like Cher. It's <laughs> Walter. What? Madonna. Walter is the Cher. The Prince. World. Elvis. And Walter. He said it, Walter, not me. All right. You all go. right. Here's his exact question. How in the hell did painting plastic toys for fun get so damn serious? 
We are shamed for our unpainted toys. We stress on painting better than the next painter. And depression sets in when we lose interest in our hobby for a while. What is going on here? Wow. Wow. Walter, you need to drink more Death Wish coffee and calm down. Ca- yeah, because maybe he drank too much Death Wish yeah, coffee. I was just going to say that would not help him calm down. And that got him all pumped for getting stressed about painting. Walter, great question. Let's discuss it. Let's unpack this. A little bitty two shoes. <laughs> no. What? No. <laughs> like, even you're confused. I don't know. Okay, so there's a lot of angles you could take. And because I'm a fairly cynical person, the, 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 the first angle I took when this question was asked was, this is, just a, this, is, this is a matter of just growing up and becoming an adult. Like when I was young, I, like, I had zero shame about the way I painted. I did not care necessarily how other people painted. I didn't like care to like look around. Um, I just learned from the people in my game store. They taught me things and I, and I painted, you know, I read some white dwarf magazines and it was very chill. It was a very, it was very relaxed, very fun. And now that I'm older now, you know, I compare myself in multiple walks of life, not just miniature painting, but you know, whole, dog walking, keeping up with the Joneses, you know, thing. Yeah. So I do a lot of comparison now, which is unhealthy. Your yardscape. My yard. Yeah. My fucking like lawn mowing and grass taking care of game. Your manscape. Man, I'm surrounded by old people and they're just fucking killer at taking care of lawns. Yeah, dude. It's like they got all day to do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think, I think part of this question can stem from the fact that the older you get, the more these types of things set in. These feelings of shame, uh, these, these feelings of comparison. Uh, maybe becoming a little bit more uh, realistic or uh, jaded or pessimistic. Uh, these these feelings can come up more likely than when you're a child and you're more whimsical and and and, and free spirited. So you're going the whimsy route on this answer. Well, that's that is one route um, that we can go down. Okay. But I'm willing to explore other routes with you together in this in this journey. What the fuck are you doing with that fucking tongue depressor? Dude, I made a... John whip. took a tongue depressor, a bit from a raider, a dark LR raider, and fucking twist tied it to the popsicle stick, to the, to the, to the tongue depressor. It's not a tongue depressor. <laughs> Ow! Is it a good weapon? Kind of, yeah. You know, I actually tried to pick up some Cavalite Orioles yesterday, and I recoiled as I was poked by one of them. <laughs> I was like, ah! Uh, so I was like, so spiky! I was like, this is very fitting for Dark Eldar. Or sorry, Drakari. Deldar. 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 For the longest time, I thought... It was spelled D R U H U K A R I. I thought it was just, I thought it was Drew Hakari, but now it's Druk D R U K H A R I Druk Hari. I thought it was Drew Hakari, like a fucking. I hope you're actually idiot. right. Cause we're gonna have so many comments. No, no, we are. I looked it up. Oh, good. And I remember <laughs> things when I look them up every single time. All right. So when I say something, you have to improve upon the weapon. Okay. This is like our building channel now. We build things. Oh, okay. This is interesting. Okay. 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 So you, you need some fixative. Okay. So you went with the nostalgia route. I think that there's there's some value in your your mindset. And I, I have a different opinion. And this is what we kind of started talking about why I was like, this does have some legs. And we decided we were going to do this topic. Was that... Unlike you, I didn't grow up as a kid painting miniatures. You, you, oh, okay, I thought you were going to stop right there. He's like, I didn't grow up as a kid. I started as an old man. I'm Benjamin Button. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Slowly, I'm turning into a baby. <laughs> a baby. Baby. That's why you look so young and you're so old. Yes. Yeah, because I'm actually reverse. 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 So I don't have this nostalgic connection to a simpler time <laughs> where all I did was I got one miniature and it just everything was sunshine and rainbows and Saturday morning cartoons. And maybe Walter didn't either. Maybe, maybe maybe Walter got started when you know ten years ago, and he was like, "I've noticed this change in the last six seven years. What the fuck?" Yeah, and I think some of that, if if you don't have that nostalgic connection, I think you you have less of like a pocket to slide back into. To <laughs> is that a thing people say ever? Slide into the pocket. Is that, is that a John? I don't special? know. I feel like it's got to be a real thing. Okay. Um, like that mental pocket. Oh, look at that! You got a little butt plug on there. That's not a butt plug. <sighs> this is a Drakari torture plug. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sliding back in the pocket. So you don't have that feeling of you don't got those 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 glasses to put on. Yeah, 
that, that that's kind of the feels goods. But what you do have is when you started and your information level and your knowledge level was at its lowest, that it seemed simpler. Yeah. It wasn't uh, simpler. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. your version of it, your world of it was simpler. And now you're like, you're absorbing, you're growing, you're becoming a better painter. If you're listening to this, <laughs> you're doing it all right. <laughs> <laughs> then it, Naturally, with that, more things are piled onto your shoulders. And then if you like take a step outside your own body, if you have that ability, <laughs> that would be a sweet ability. If you haven't be a mutant, yeah, uh, you know, uh, contact X Men, <laughs> <laughs> call Professor X today. Yeah, you know, or like a uh, you know a near death experience, right? Like you get, you know, you're just like riding on your roller skates down the street, <laughs> and you get hit does. by a car. <laughs> or you're, you know, you find out that you're an insurgent little baby, and you get kicked into a wall. <laughs> you can't kill all of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you gotta link that one below. All right, that's a Cracker Milk skit <laughs> called Condom Safety. I think. Yeah, <laughs> it's fucking great. <laughs> um, you gotta watch it like two times at least. The first time you'll just say yeah. what. The first time you're confused. The second time it all comes together. <laughs> it all comes together. Okay. Um, I don't know where I was. Oh, yeah. So if you have a, a, a near-death experience and that allows you to, you know, view yourself from the third person, right? Because the soul is leaving the body, that whatever. Right. They right. say that happens. Yeah, yeah. And then what you're going to do is you're going to, like, hover over yourself. You're, like, ghostly Scott hovering over real Scott. And you'll see, Scott, all that stuff on your shoulders, that's all that mini painting stress. And when you were a child, you, you didn't like, have... Oh. You thought like a child. Yeah. And now you paint like a child. Rough. And now you're in a man. You're you're in a man. You're in a man. It's you still paint, paint like in a man. You, you assemble models like in a man. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a reference. This is us just being idiots. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. Okay, I so you, what you're saying is is that I mean this the stress people put on themselves is a negative thing and that they no, should get rid of it. I or? think the more it kind of connected involved invested you are in anything in life okay the easier it can be to get overwhelmed because you just see all angles uh, oh right okay you know, yes yes you As see you get all better. sides of it of course um so it doesn't mean that this wasn't there before it just means that it's a version of it now with your newfound knowledge and wisdom that knowledge. is there yeah so this is you know great responsibility it comes with great painting walter Great painting comes with great responsibility. That too. That's what I meant to Uncle say. Uncle Ben. The Rice Company. <laughs> Uncle Ben. Um, okay. I just thought of another thing. Unless you wanted to say more about your thing. No, I, I also think we're coming at this kind of as a uh, like like a myth busters to his statement. Myth but, busters! But we're not... I, I don't think we're, we're going to stay there. No, no, no. Yeah, we're ex we're exploring many corners of this question right now. Yes. And, and we are starting out in the... This, it's question, full of this shit. question is full of shit question. <laughs> and then we'll go, but then we'll canvas the question and be like, okay, let's really think about this. But no, we're kind of, it's not full of shit. We're just fucking around. Um, anyways, um, next thing to think about, and we discussed this in a long ago episode, but with the advent of social media, Yikes. making comparisons and sharing knowledge and, you know, this whole idea that you can't waste time. Yeah. You know? What's that? What's that line from Welcome to the Internet? Apathy is a crime. Yeah. No, boredom is a crime. Some anything and everything all the time. I can't remember the fucking quote, but it's like, yeah, you're not allowed to be bored or wasting time ever in this current day and age. You got to be listening to a podcast. Got to be watching a fucking video. Got to be reading an article. You got to be doing work. Yeah. And at all times, you are either making money or getting better at making money. You know? That's that's what the man wants you to feel, right? Yeah, and and it yeah, it feels like that. So it's kind of like in that 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 feeling kind of creeps into your hobby too. And it's like, wow, there's so many resources on the internet, paid for free content, written content, video content, photo stuff. It's like holy shit! Like you can, like there's no time to waste here. We gotta do this. I look at like every day. There's a hundred new models being posted by amazing painters and yeah like, what did i do i know and we talked about this there can be this feeling where it's like you versus the world yeah because you view your instagram feed or your youtube feed as a person as an entity that is making more and producing more than you and it's like 
I can't keep up with this. Like everyone's so much faster than me. Well, in reality, they're all painting things at the same speed as you, but they're all coming out together versus just your one effort, you know, your singular effort. So it's like, fuck. Like, so I think that definitely Reddit, social media, you know, Instagram, all that shit that definitely contributes to this feeling of, wow, this is really serious. Yeah. And that's the, the social media thing really is a double sided popsicle stick. Yeah. It tongue on, depressor. Uh, it was, it was tongue depressor. Get it right. Yeah. On one side, look, all it is is just a twisty tie. It's fine. It's fine. You know, it's all the pictures and all the inspiration and all the motivation and all the exciting, cool things that people paint. We all, like to all look the at great content to learn from. Yeah. All, all all the knowledge to improve is all out there. You just need to go looking for it. That's the that's the side of the tongue depressor with just a little twisty tie on it. But then you flip that tongue depressor around and it's covered in Drukari death metal. Like it's actually metal for death. So it's death metal. Right. Nice. Um, like a sword. You'd refer to that as death metal. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I think like an executioner's axe is the that's definition death of death metal. Okay. Yeah. So uh, on the death metal side of the, of the tongue depressor, is all of the weight that comes with having access to all of that right and we, there's now sudden suddenly responsibility on you to to consume it all to use it all because it's there right it's like you're at the buffet and you're expected to eat everything yeah because it's there yeah and it, it kind of really is like that it's yeah. like oh, i'm paid for it and it's all here i'm gonna eat till i can't drive gotta take advantage of it <laughs> i want the meat sweats whoa <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> he just like it's, barked at me <laughs> as reminds me of a story that um we went on a hunting trip one time and on our way back from the hunting trip we went to a chinese buffet because it's my, my dad's favorite restaurants in the whole world are chinese buffets like <laughs> shitty chinese buffets yeah, it's like yeah, he yeah, would yeah. go there Moon over buffet. like <laughs> yeah over like a you know a high-end steakhouse he'd be like yeah let's let's go to the china walk <laughs> <laughs> buffet <laughs> And so we went to one, we stopped at one on the way home from a fish uh, hunting trip. And it was me, my dad, my brother. And I laughed so hard. We got back in the truck to, to drive again. And my brother like, wasn't trying to be funny with just like making a matter of fact comment. And he's like, I ate so much. I don't know if I can drive. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, had this moment of concern. <laughs> Cause he ate amazing. too much at the Chinese buffet. Yeah. That has to do with this episode. <laughs> um, uh, this is how you stick in extra preamble ramble. Yeah, yeah you fucking <laughs> sneaky get sneaker in there. All right, I, I got an, I got another angle for this. All right, hit me with the angle your dangle. Okay, um, this is the one that I thought about immediately when we, we pulled up this thing, and and that is what our hobby is. Whoa, whoa, our hobby is not playing video games. Our hobby is not watching YouTube videos. A hobby is not <laughs> whose hobby is watching YouTube videos. Well, that's a lot of people that's watching. So a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of people. <laughs> Our hobby is not uh, mo watching movies and TV shows. Our hobby is not a passive activity. And you say, well, video games is, is you know it's not necessarily passive activity. I'm just saying like general video games. I'm saying like competitive video games. Like you're how about reading. Not, yeah, it's not I mean, reading like, either. It's so like reading and video game playing are neither passive nor necessarily mentally I guess, uh, taxing. Well, no, they are taxing. But here's the thing. I mean, okay, you explain it. It's okay. the, I don't think it's about describing the activity in any certain way. It's about what it produces. Right. Right. Yeah. So if you know, if I'm sitting and just playing a mobile game on my phone or whatever, like it, it just it's it's a pretty low barrier of of commitment mentally to do it as well as accessibility. So when we think about our hobby, um, our hobby requires a lot of things of us. It requires space, it requires motivation, it requires time, it requires tools, it requires the actual miniature, it requires the motivation to get to that miniature. You just flung a freaking <laughs> fingernail across the room at me. I flung it back and got you too. <laughs> Dinged off your headphones. <laughs> um it's it's like there's this it's a it's a much steeper hill just to to start doing the thing or to keep doing the thing as opposed to just i'm just gonna sit down and turn on the old boob tube 
You know, it's just so much easier and there's such a, an easy on-ramp for so many activities in our society today. And maybe this is where Walter is right in that it's not the, the issue is not necessarily the miniature painting being more stressful. It's that we as humans have tried to make every aspect of our life that we can as simple and like brainless as possible. Like, oh, I need to buy this, this, and this. Oh, three buttons on my phone. It'll get delivered tomorrow. Like, everything is is made to be the, mm. the least impactful on your day and time in your brain. Mm. And that's not what this hobby is. Like, it requires more of you. It requires a little bit of of not being lazy. Um, and that doesn't mean that if you like, I don't paint every day. It doesn't mean you're a lazy person. It just means that you... You have to be proactive in getting started and sitting down and putting paint on the model. It requires you to take some steps. And because of that, there's an inherent level of seriousness to it. It's like that doesn't sound like a fun activity is to build yourself up to just get and sit and do the thing. When you were a little kid, it was like it was, you were so excited to sit and do the thing. Yeah, you never really saw the steps to get to doing the thing. It was yeah. all part of it, right? Yeah, and and now as as we're adults, you kind of put everything in little boxes of time and, and commitment and all that thing because you only have so many little boxes at a day because so many are already taken up. And so you you kind of overanalyze, do I want to do, this is going to be six boxes worth. Is it, do, do I want to commit six boxes in my day when I only have nine boxes today? Once I get home from work, like you're you're putting a lot more weight onto the actual activity, uh, plus the kind of mental work that it takes to to really work yourself through a pro project that you try to make look good. Like it's not yeah. just a autopilot thing. You, I mean, you can autopilot paint, and I think that's a healthy activity to do. But a lot of the time, we don't want to do that. We want to improve, or I really like this model, or I really want it to look good and stuff. And then it's not. It's not. It's not sitting and turning on Netflix and just whatever shows up in my recommended and just hitting play. Like <sighs> that's, that's so much different. And I kind of wonder too, from a kid's perspective, we um, talking about kids. Cause like when we were kids, like we didn't, I mean, I didn't have the internet. Like I, we talked about being bored. Like if I didn't do something, it was, wasn't cause there was a lack of things to do. It was just, they required a little bit of effort. And now when kids just have like an iPad in front of them all the time and they don't have that, are, are they are they less likely to do things like paint miniatures because that that is a higher level of effort involved into doing the thing? I don't know. Hmm. That's, a, that's a question I don't have an answer for, but I think there might be some, some stuff there. I have a question for you as a parent and for all parents that are watching this. Do you feel like having a child and sharing activities that you enjoy with that child is a way to kind of experience the like childlike discovery of a thing that you enjoy and like live through them vicariously. So it's like they, you see them enjoying it and like maybe they come home from school and like, Hey dad, Hey mom, can we do this thing that you showed me? And it's like, fuck, like now I want to do it more because my kid enjoys it. Like I feel like I used to enjoy it or, or feel like I missed out on enjoying it or something like that. Yeah, like I'm not like a vampire where I like no, I, I absorb, no, it's, I'm like absorb your It's generating experience. your own enjoyment. Yeah, you enjoy it in a different way. Like you when I'm painting miniatures with my daughter or like we're playing Curse City, I'm in not enjoying the game of playing the game. I'm not enjoying the game in the same way if I play it with my buddies. I'm I'm enjoying oh, yeah. it in a different way. And it's cool to do that because that's like the only way that I've experienced to have that kind of experience. Like, man, I'd love to paint miniatures with a little mini version of me. Yeah. Whether it's like a little daughter or a little son. Or a dog, you know. Or a little doggy. You could teach Bullet to paint. I mean, Bullet's smart enough. She could figure it out for yeah, sure. I'm Crusher, sure I don't know about him. <laughs> no, no. no. Crusher, you just watch, yeah. okay? Yeah. He'll bark when um, the mailman arrives. Yeah, it's, it's not that you get to double dip. At least in my experience, I don't get to double dip and like enjoy my mini painting the way that I enjoy it. Plus, she's painting with me, so I get to like double enjoyment. It's I am enjoying it in a different from a different angle. Okay, and and so there's different stuff that is, is cool with it. So that's my response. To Very cool. So yeah, I think that's all I had to say about talking about this from it being a it's an active hobby. It's kind of like we talk about maintaining your lawn. Mm. It's like. Talk about stress. Talk about always, you know, like trying to get better and blah, 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 blah. Well, there's some aspects if like I really, you know, if you really enjoy having a pretty lawn and well taken care of and beautiful flowers and all this stuff, 
you got to pull some weeds sometime. And then pulling weeds takes time. Pulling weeds isn't fun. But you understand that it's something you still want to do or still need to do because of the final product that it creates. So sometimes you got to pull some weeds, man. Sometimes you don't realize you're inside of a John Nina's analogy <laughs> yeah. until it's too late. Yeah, you can't get out now. The door's been closed. <laughs> like, shut up. I'm in the weeds now, dude. Literally in the weeds. You better pick them as long as you're there. <laughs> that's it. Sometimes you got to pull some weeds. And that's okay, though. So there, you, you need to find the fun in the weed pulling because you're focused on the thing that's going to happen, that's going to be once it's done. And so you, know, you can look at all this stress in a negative way, or you can say, like, no, this is just kind of the natural approach to um, really having a fulfilling experience at the end of the day. And I should maybe analyze the stress that I'm feeling and, and, and not look at it in, in such a negative way light and just say this is part of it and shed what you can shed yeah a really healing thing that i recently listened to and it sounds super basic but for some reason it kind of just spoke to me when i saw it was uh like in a sense stop shitting on yourself or be your best friend like when you're feeling bad have that third out of body third person view experience and be like look at this person and what they're going through you're the only person that knows exactly what you're going through and exactly why you're feeling the way you're feeling. Just step out and be like, dude, all that shit that you just experienced, that sucks. And you, the way you feel is totally valid or, you know, whatever, whatever the situation may be. That's a really, that's a really positive thing. It was a really positive thing for me. Hopefully it is for you as well. Um, okay. We've, we've, we've uh, discussed like the outer perimeter of this question sure. we discussed, you know, Hey, is it valid? Where is it, where is it coming from? What is it inspired by? But now I think we should just take the question at face value and assume it's true. Okay. Okay. Miniature painting has gotten more seriously over the last few years. Have you noticed that? Uh, is it a positive thing? Is it a negative thing? Should we try to reverse it? Like what, what can we do to reverse it? Things we, like that. We need to find a parallel dimension. It's not that way. No, we talk about aliens right now. We yeah. had a lot of alien conversations too. This, this, uh, these yeah. past, past couple of days. Yeah, we 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 hop into that dimensional portal. Yeah, we yeah. find ourselves there and kill them. Yeah. Whoa. Well, we can't be both there. That's true. I'm gonna kill twelve year old Scott at the games workshop in Gurney Mills. And take no, place. we're not time traveling. We're traveling to a different dimension. But you just way said different. kill ourselves. Yeah. So there's gonna be a version of us like. We'll juice through the portal and we'll be in your backyard, right? When we juice through, okay? And then we're gonna come. We're gonna come in the the sliding window door, sliding door, sliding glass door. We're gonna come come through that. We're gonna run down the stairs, and then that dimension's John and Scott will be sitting at this table, and they'll Wait. be reporting, recording a podcast about something what, slightly different. Yeah, like Thai cooking. Wow. Okay. That's quite different, but okay. Yes. Okay. So that, they're there down that, here. There is that version. And there's like freaking walks on the wall. Mm. And and we're actually Asian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's still us. Oh, okay. There's only oh, slight oh. changes. Oh, and so oh, right. we come down the stairs and we have to murder them with their Japanese steak knives. For a moment, I thought I was inside of another analogy. And then I was like, no, this is just, this is just John riffing right now. This is exactly how we do this. So at any point in our lives, we see exactly us running towards us. We knew it was possible. We, we knew we we're about to die. And that's we, why we know we're about to die. That's why I made that this weapon. Okay. That's why I've been cutting and filing my nail. Cause when I die, I want to look good at least. Oh, I thought you were going to use it as a stabbing. No, this would be a very bad stabbing tool after I made it all soft and round. Oh, man. Okay, anyways, back to the fucking question. I don't even know why we're talking about this trash. Uh, <laughs> Mitch Brandy has gotten more serious. Okay, maybe that's true. Okay. Because of some aforementioned reasons, maybe it's not true. But we're going to consider it true right now. Sure. Um, <laughs> I feel like it's it's valid to say that it's gotten more serious. And I think that... Um, for my own personal experience, it's a, a negative thing. Um, I think I would rather be a shitty painter and happy and not know any of this exists than know it exists and be better and be miserable. Okay, I'm not miserable, but like that, I, those are the two ends of the spectrum that I am evaluating right now. And maybe I'm somewhere on that spectrum closer to the... I'm a better painter, know this exists, and I'm slightly sadder than I would otherwise be if I was ignorant and blissful. You know what okay. I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying. I'm on like, I'm on like a six or a seven on that scale. Whatever. Okay. Okay. Not a five. Not in the middle. So 
so yeah that, that that's my thought I, I think it's totally valid question i think it's a uh, i don't think it's yeah you don't think it's yeah i think it's a natural reaction to what has happened in the hobby i don't think that like it's just like people getting weirder as they grow up i think it's i think it's a a reaction to external stimuli yeah factors i think that as anything becomes more popular becomes bigger mm, yeah we didn't talk it, about that it naturally evolves in ways in different sub segments are formed so just like in 1986 um if you had your nintendo entertainment system and you got your mario bros and your duck hunts like that what video games were then was much more simplistic than what video games are now multi-million dollar tournaments highly competitive <laughs> anywhere any game you can play online with leagues and and rankings and yeah. all this like and it's not that that version of Mario and Duck Hunt aren't still out there. You can still find games that approach the genre that same way, but it's grown. And so Interesting. because especially it feels like in the last three or four years, the miniature hobby is, is just grown exponentially in so many ways. All these different sub segments come to be or start sprouting up. And some take hold more than others. And I think one of those is, and I think they can influence the the greater whole somewhat too, because what becomes more popular, what becomes, you know, more in the, in the light of the general public, what is a, a something that is, wouldn't necessarily be something you exposed to if you just started mini painting 15 years ago is now something you catch on to, or you hear about, or you see around you much quicker. And so it feels like that elevation of the seriousness the stress the this is all about being an amazing miniature painter and doing whatever it takes to get there it's it's, it's much more readily available now interesting interesting comparison to the video game industry and how it has also gotten more complicated dude i turned it into it's like technology right technology enables you to make more complicated games do more complicated things stab your friends more often with tongue depressors with dark Eldar bits on them. Um, and so the, the industry reflects that. Yeah. Um, so the, I guess has the technology around miniature painting changed a whole lot that would have impacted that, uh, not, not including like obviously the internet around it and, and information sharing, but like actual miniature painting technology, like airbrushes. Uh, have I, become don't I don't more... think that really, I mean, I don't see that as, as a factor that influences the seriousness you know, well, I, f I feel like it might. So if I can, if I can make the analogy that you just sure. made, um, because we have in more incredible tools to make more incredible video games, we do. And because of that, the games become more complicated. Okay. If we have more tools to paint in more ways, more results are possible. M more levels of quality are possible to a wider range of people. The, 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 the mountain cap goes up. I guess I think that that kind of puts some presumptions on that these better tools are the means to make better quality art. I don't think it matters whether or not that is true. It matters how it's perceived. Okay. Okay. Yeah. From that perspective, I think that's probably a fair assessment. So do people, when they see airbrush art, are they like, I wish I could do that. I want an airbrush. Yeah. Do the majority of people say that? And if they do, then that's, that's what matters. Yeah. I think. Or... The devil's advocate of this is Please. because it's growing, devil's the ho the hobby is becoming more and more popular. Yeah, yeah. That that means that's where the money is. If it's more popular, that means there's more opportunity. If where there's opportunity, there's the ability for folks to make money and make more products that they want you to think you need. Going back to the FOMO episode. Oh, I didn't know you were going in that direction. I thought what you were going to say is because there is opportunity for earning money in the field, more people are coming here to earn money and thus it is more serious. Oh. Because now people are trying to make money with this. You got everyone who's, everyone who paints a model makes a fucking Facebook page for it. It's, yeah. it's like a studio. You know, they're, they're, they're hoping to transition into maybe being a commission painter or something like that, which is a total, totally fine thing. But it's like once you introduce money, things get more serious. I thought you were going that direction. But what you're saying is also interesting. Yeah, it's there's there's a bigger opportunity for making money here because the hobby has grown. Yeah. And that's where these other new products come in. 
and the products come in and they're being marketed towards you as something you need to get better or you need to be a better painter than you are when in actuality it's probably somewhere in the in the middle okay i would say closer to you don't need them the information is more important than the specific tool but um the fine tuning of tools over time for specifically for our hobby is probably better but i think that's really interesting what you said that the more money is introduced the more things especially the things that we're exposed to are fueled in some way by money yeah so that amazing paint job that blows you away that you just saw on instagram a dude probably has a patreon and yeah. he, he probably is doing the way where he has the steps by step guide on how to paint it yeah and for five dollars a month you can get that or they have a youtube channel or they are a company that makes miniature paintbrushes or they're like blah, 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 blah. Or they have a 3D printing Kickstarter or what, you know what I mean? Like there's, yeah. there's a lot of things that we are exposed to that aren't just, uh, just, this is just my hobby friends that all have day jobs and families and we do this for fun. We play some games, we paint our minis. Yeah. That still exists. It obviously is very much out there, but a lot of the stuff we see um is f has some influence on money yeah and it's honestly kind of strange i think for you and i uh, not to alienate ourselves from our audience but everyone we deal with in the hobby it almost is doing it for money mm -hmm. all the youtubers like okay it's not to say that we're like sellouts and that we only do it for the money but like our whole angle on the hobby is this is our job mm -hmm. and so like every sponsor we talk to is a miniature company. Every mm -hmm. YouTuber we talk to is that like even Dan, he's the manager of the source and like, mm -hmm. he's, he's interested in pursuing all these, you know, hobby related endeavors. It's weird. Isn't that weird? I never thought about it before this very moment. That has to, that has to not be good for us. Right? Probably not. Like, I feel like it'd be amazing to be surrounded by hobbyists who are just like, dude, I fucking bought my new army. I'm fucking hyped about it. Can't wait yeah. to play the game. It's like, that's, that's 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 the right thing to care about yeah you know it's, it's I'm funny i can cry right now what my brain went to immediately when you said that was the experience that i distinctly remember having when we we taught the mini painting class yeah and like yeah it's, it's just like these people are no, fucking yeah awesome people awesome people that this is just their hobby and they wanted to learn and have fun i know yeah it's a mini absolutely that's the that yeah that's and there the, was another weight on it there wasn't any other expectations on it it was they wanted this weekend to be a fun weekend. I know, in yeah. Paint. And that's it. what we did. I loved it, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, I don't think there's a reason why, up to this very moment, we haven't sat and thought about the fact that a lot of things surrounding us in the hobby are are by organizations or people or whatever that are doing it for a living. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't think that that's necessarily something that was like, oh, it's just a, it's a toxic thing or whatever. It's just something that's like, oh, I never really th thought about it that way. And so we're getting this more towards our own like little therapy session than it is I actually know, helping no, other people. No, <laughs> no kidding, right? Um, yeah, it is. But I think you could re you could try to separate that for you, for your own self. I think, you know? yeah, yeah. So, okay. So saying that, obviously a solution to solve it if it were a problem or if you considered it a problem would be to fucking hang out with people who are normal yeah. not not to say you aren't normal and beautiful but like when you and i and vince and sam talk what we talk about yeah fucking youtube videos fucking patreon fucking making you know make a dosh yeah i mean it, yeah because like we're all like you're always sharing information we don't all only talk about that we also talk about we talk about painting, painting a lot yeah I talk about painting a lot <laughs> um but like, you know, people don't like my friends don't care about that shit. Yeah. So I should hang out with them more. Like, it's just like when you, when you like could go to a happy hour or like a, like a birthday gathering for people at your work, the the old phrase, you know, they're all are talking shop. Yeah. It's like you with people that have something in common <laughs> with you. That's also work. You end up just talking about that. You just stab yourself again. I did. Um, quit playing with sharp things. <sighs> Um, and so that's just, that's kind Talking of, shop. kind of it. So yeah, whatever shop. your shop is, your shop should be around the fun for the hobby and the painting. The shop shouldn't be around the, the serious, boring stuff, the administrative stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, that stuff might've crept into like normal hobbyists too. Not, not, not making money, but like 
oh, if you've seen the newest Ben Comments video on his Patreon, it's like, oh, no, I don't sub to that one. I sub to a different one. So it's yeah. not necessarily about the making of money, but the spending of money and the inqu- inquiring and acquiring of knowledge and improvement in the hobby. So it's like, we kind of already discussed that. Right. But, you know, it could, it could turn into that kind of conversation as well. Um, I wanted to briefly talk about what the, uh, the M word that you just said, and that was money. Money. Um, and that's from a consumer standpoint. I think that there's a level of seriousness or stress around this. And I don't know how much this has changed over time around the the expense of this hobby. So it's not cheap. Hmm. So that there's a little bit more of a, a seriousness to it. Like when you, uh, I kind of think of it like as like a nerd's version or a geek's version of golf, right? Golf is a very expensive hobby. And there's very few people that I know that play golf that they don't have a a level of seriousness to it, even if it's just like they're, you know, play once a month kind of whatever. Like you have to, otherwise you're just terrible at golf. And it's a really expensive hobby. The clubs and the balls and the shoes and all that stuff. And so you're an adult. You need to think like an adult. Um, I need to make sure that my hobby time, I'm making the most of it. I'm putting this in air quotes. I'm making the most of it. And that means that I'm doing well with it. And then that puts that weight on your shoulders because it's not cheap. And it's something that's, you know, it's it's looked at as as it produces a thing that I, I need to make sure each one's as good as it can be. Hmm. So I think that there's a side of it, too, around money on the consumer side. Yeah. You know, oh yeah, I totally agree. Not that it, it has to be either. Like you said, you you did a video where you spent eleven dollars yeah. to paint a miniature. Yep, and you bought everything you needed to paint a miniature. Mm-hmm. Eleven dollars. That's pretty cheap. That's pretty cheap. It's pretty cheap. So it doesn't nec- it doesn't necessarily have to be. But going back into the influx of more companies targeting us for products. Yeah, because there's more things that are pressure on us to buy more stuff. Yeah, the more I discuss this, the more it's like totally, totally legitimate thought that you would feel like over the course of your life in the hobby that it got more serious, like in the last 15 years. Mm-hmm. And I think it, it totally has. Um, I don't think this is just like a nostalgia thing or I'm an old cynical adult now and I hate everyone. Um, but you are, Walter. You but are. you are, yeah. <laughs> bitter, bitter old man. Uh <laughs> I think, yeah, it's totally legitimate that you might notice this. And I'm curious about our commenters. Obviously, we've discussed pretty much every detail that might lean you toward a certain answer. But I'm curious if, uh, if, you know, if you have noticed the hobby getting more serious. And if you have, in what time frame? In a three-year time frame? In a 15-year time frame? Like, how off, how long have you been involved in the hobby? And, yeah. and have you noticed that thing and over how much time? And how much of that do you think is an internal thing, a thing that you kind of grew to to take it more that way, and how much it was an external thing with these other factors were leading it to be this? It wasn't me actively making this choice for change. I'm it's curious. Kind of if hard you, to identify. I know. I, I mean, it's not an easy question, but we've got some smart goody peepees out there. Smart good poopers. Yeah, because you don't get that moniker, that "Hello, my name is" sticker, with without a little responsibility. Nigo Montoya. Nico Montoya. You killed my father. Um, I want to say really quickly that we're using this term serious through this entire episode. And we ha- we, we've been using it in a very negative way. Yes. Like the word serious the is question, a bad word. Did you read his question? It, yeah. it, it presupposes that it, this is a negative thing. Yes, yeah, so that serious is bad. And I actually come to think of it I don't think serious is the right word oh. here. I don't know what the right word is. I have another example of how it got serious, but finish that. Okay. Um, serious doesn't need doesn't need to be the antithesis of fun. Ooh, right. But it kind of it kind of mm, it's not. I don't think so. Things can be serious and fun. Yeah. For me, that's Dota two. Yeah. Like when when you yeah exactly. Mm-hmm. It's like. Look, when you got your your significant other, your partner, whatever, when you decided to make it serious, mm. I think that's when it starts getting more fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. For me, definitely that was the case. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that means we had sex. 
<laughs> I was gonna say something really inappropriate. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, definitely. And Serious. it felt so good. <laughs> I just had sex. <laughs> um, I can't believe she let. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, this is where this is going. Okay, so serious doesn't have to mean bad. Like, I'm, I'm, and it, some of this is personality type too. Like, I'm a pretty like, I, I, in, I have like an intense personality sometimes, and the things that I really, I really like, I, I get very serious with. Yeah, and that means I like it, and that's why I, I'm serious with mini paintings. I really like it. And so I don't, I don't want to be like, <laughs> and then slap around some craft paint and then I play it in my game. Okay. I don't want to do that. I want to be like, I'm going to make this the best dwarf ever. That's, that's my mental, uh, you know, my voice inside. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. And, and I have more fun for that. So it can be serious. It can be more serious as you go along your mini painting journey. It's not what's, uh, it's not what's happening to you or around you it's it's how you are choosing to perceive it mm. so how do you respond to that how do you deal with that how do you look at that yeah and it doesn't have to be bad you could say look it's more serious now but that doesn't mean it's bad it just means that i'm i'm going further on my journey and this was kind of a natural progression for me i can look at that seriousness in a bad way i can be negative nancy i think it like is walter bad. i think it's i think there are negative things to it and positive things to it but those things are very very real they're not hypothetical. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll show you a concrete example right now. Okay, show me. We looked at Golden Demon, uh, a painting competition that was in the '90s, and we noticed a theme mm. in those competitions, and that no longer exists. It's a lot more lighthearted. A lot more lighthearted. A lot more comedic entries, yeah. fun entries, and fun. now they're all fucking grim and dark. It's like this is super serious. Yes. First Marines are really serious guys and we can't take the piss. No, there's no more piss taking. There's no more piss taking. There's like no more... Where, where do I give all my piss? No yeah. one's taking it. No one. <laughs> what do I do with it? Throw it out my window in my in my night pot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever, yeah. Your night pot along with your little pot full of coals to so keep your feet warm. <laughs> Don't get those mixed up. Don't. You want poopy feet in the middle of the night. Yeah. Do not pee. Or do not poop into the coals. Yeah. Bad. Bad smells. Uh, night soil. <laughs> night soil? You ever heard that term night soil? No. Night soil is shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that you dumped out your windows and it splattered in the alleyways. And that was the night soil. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're getting rid of the poop in the pot. Yes. That's what you're doing. At night. Before plumbing. Yeah. When you lived in a big old stinky city. Icky. That's another uh, preamble ramble brought to you by John. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a fun fact. Anyway. Okay, okay, okay. There's an example if it's it's less serious. Because we brought this oh, no, up. More because, serious. Uh, more serious. We brought this up because I had a funny idea for a piece. And we were, I think we were discussing this. And I don't know if it was you, me, and Ben, or you, me, and somebody. And somebody's like, well, yeah, but you can't really do that anymore. Like, it's not going to win. What was it, though? Was my idea? Yeah. I can't remember. Shoot. It'll come to me. I okay. think I wrote it down. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. So I, I think, so what sparked that example was you were saying that we're viewing seriousness in a negative light. And my pushback was that the things we're talking about are real and happening. But alongside those things, there are also the positive things of being serious that you just mentioned. That you derive enjoyment from taking it seriously. Like you want to be like top fifty, top ten minute American miniature painters. Like you like that is a thing. You know, you want to view it as a leaderboard that's a competitive spirit that drives you. Um and that is a totally positive thing, and I don't think it should be taken away. Well, I don't. I don't. I don't think you have. You can still take the increase of seriousness in your hobby as a um, as a positive thing without doing comparisons with others. Too. Oh, absolutely. You know, absolutely not. Um, well, I don't think you have to look at it's you versus other people. I think you can just you. I really enjoy this thing, and I could be in a bubble. You know. Yeah, locked in a cave for 50 years and yeah. I could still take it serious and no one else would ever see my stuff because I really enjoy this and I want to get better and I want to see what new direction I could take with my you know my miniature painting like I think that is is absolutely a uh, a real thing too yeah those are the kind of people you don't even know about that exist 
Yeah. Right? Because they have no presence on the internet, so you don't know what they're doing, and, and they're just fucking slaying it by themselves. And a lot of times, there are those people out there that you wouldn't know that's, that they are those people because they've got 10, 20,000 followers on Instagram just because people found out about them, and this whole time they've just been doing because they really love what they're doing, mm-hmm. and then the notoriety followed. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of a natural progression is you really enjoy something and you really want to improve and others will take notice, especially yeah. now in today's day and age. Take notice. No, they won't because they don't post your stuff anywhere. At the local hobby shop, you mean? Maybe? I don't know what I'm saying right now. You're just making up words and phrases. Apathy is a tragedy and boredom is a crime. Yeah, we Anything go. Anything and everything all the time. That's lyric. That's the lyric. Well, things just come to you at the strangest of times. Uh, okay. I... Okay, I think this is one of the best podcast topics that we've had in a long time. Oh, good. I'm glad you think that. Um, This conversation was eye-opening for me, Mm. and I feel like gave a lot of perspective. Yeah, I think there's a lot more. It makes me want to look at anything Walter says with a second look, because usually Walter says stuff, and I'm like... Mm. Oh man, poor Walter. Oh yeah. We love so this you, is what this is what you get if you're a member of, of the Patreon. <laughs> right right into a fucking <laughs> advertisement for our Patreon. So if you want to get shit on repeatedly, <laughs> you can submit topics and we can poop all over them. And it costs you money. <laughs> Here's the reason why this, bi- this, this hobby ain't so serious. <laughs> yeah, because this guy exists in it. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it couldn't be serious. <laughs> oh, no. You want, do you want to say anything else about this? I, I don't have anything else. No, yeah. I think... Okay. I think to 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 you know to close the book on this, I think we actually got into more interesting things in here than what we had even planned to talk about in this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we did stop ourselves yesterday. In our, we did because we're like, okay, this is good enough. But stop. I think the things that we talked about was enough for like for a full fledged conversation, and then we probably did double of those here because things naturally came up right in a fun way. Yeah. Um. And I I I'm, I'm totally with you. I feel like. This is more up to me about self-reflection yes. on how I view things mm-hmm. and how you know I want to have my own attitude moving forward on things. Um, so there's going to be positive and negative ar- around you in the environment, no matter no matter what. It's just how you want to react to it. So if you enjoy this hobby, don't let out outside influences take that from you. You know, let you just come back to your center be aware of them the good bad and otherwise and just go about them in the way that's healthiest for you that's all me. right that's that <laughs> tldr out of the news we creature. got some news creature caster painting competition just uh showed off their first second third uh resin beast was the name of it exclusively an online competition this year two categories large and small mm-hmm. first second third in each this isn't the kind of competition where everyone gets first, second, and third based on a rubric. There is only one first. That can only be one. And only one second, only one third. I guess there's two of them because there's two categories. Yeah, and then there was also like uh, dealer's choice. I don't know what it's called. Uh, staff's choice or whatever. So they got, they also picked a large model and a small model that was like the Creature Caster team, um, their best their favorites yeah, of each that didn't staff, that didn't place staff picks. staff picks that's the word i was trying to get to for about 10 minutes yeah <laughs> yes staff picks yeah. <laughs> um yeah did uh, uh i can't remember i know a long time ago we mentioned that i went over to your house and we spent some time taking pictures of your empress dragon yep uh do we show those pictures in a podcast i don't know okay i thought they were really nice and so if we didn't show them we'll show them now um yeah, John entered into that competition, and I know you were kind of on the fence about wanting to do it or saving it for the next, like, potentially Adepticon in yeah. 2022. Yeah. Um, and you entered. I did. Yes. I entered. And, and you I... got third place. Hey! Fucking A. Yay! How many entries? I don't know. Lots. Probably tons. Probably tens, like 30s, 40s, something yeah. like that, right? I think they had quite a few. Good fucking job, dude. Thank you. Yeah, I was. I think the reason why I finally decided to pull the trigger and do it was because, like I said, I painted this model quite a while ago at this point, and I wanted to kind of just close the chapter 
Close right the chapter and yeah. she was painted for a competition that the competition never happened in here two years later or something like that year and a half later then she um she got to go to a competition and so i'm happy with that and i'm happy how she did um so yeah it's good it's a, it was struggle though and my hesitation was always that i painted it for an in-person competition i didn't paint it for an online competition mm-hmm. and i think there's a difference um I there think, is. I yeah. think there's, there's things you 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 cannot get away with at an in-person competition that you can get away with with an online competition. Yeah, it's because you solely you get to choose what angles you're showing. Right? Yeah, and yeah. You only get a couple of pictures, and you make the your your money shots. You spend all your time there, and, and yeah. And so <laughs> there was a lot of <laughs> there was a lot of stuff that like hours and hours and hours spent in areas of that model that in the four pictures of the competition are never seen. Yeah. And that, that hurts. bugs, bugs the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah. That hurts. Um, because you know, one of the aspects of this, one of the main, um, criteria was five categories for judging. One of them was storytelling. And, uh, and I have a big story that's told in my base and you can't, re- you can kind you can see it, but with only four pictures and they said what the four pictures had to be, of uh, which angles, um, you could see it, but it was, it was, it was not there. Um, in that and so i utilized the base and for the most part the pictures that i saw there's just in their big models obviously it's hard to take a good picture with the base and so a lot of pictures i saw didn't really even have a base so um so yeah i'm happy i'm happy that i placed um so yeah so i got a a trophy coming in the mail and i'm not i'm gonna quit talking right now <laughs> uh i'm really happy for you your model looks amazing uh yeah, you beat out probably like I don't know forty contestants. Like, Let's keep making that number bigger. Can we make it like 400? 70, 70 400. Um, I was gonna make a, a reference to I judged a Reddit painting competition oh, over yeah. the weekend, and it also is an online competition, so you get to pick your angles that you send to the judges. And if you haven't painted a portion of the model, don't send that fucking picture. <laughs> Scott's not saying this because somebody actually did that, but he's actually saying this because <laughs> it's just a bad idea. Yeah, it's just a bad idea. Yeah, just don't. If say, for instance, if you have like a butcher knife and the entire other half of it isn't painted, just don't take a picture of that part. That's the whole point of an eye condition. You can, you can, you can phone it in and then not show the phoned in part. Because if you ever went to a competition where a large part of the model was not painted, you're done. Your prospects are uh, uh, are destroyed. I think typically in that situation, they take the mini out of the glass case, they put it on the ground, and they step on it in front of you, and they spit. Like, what out. is this shit? <laughs> Let's crush it right there. This yeah. is a serious miniature painting competition. <laughs> Walter, there I am. There I am, getting all serious again. But yeah, that is true. If a portion, a large portion of the model is not painted, and you were to walk up to Crystal Brush, you would just you'd get maybe get a finalist pin, but you. You wouldn't. You you would get a finalist pin. You wouldn't. I don't know. I, I don't know. I honestly don't know what happened. Uh, it's, it's it's a no no. It's like a statement piece. It's like you're making art yeah. statements. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, I yeah. painted this the most beautiful miniature ever painted, <laughs> but I just didn't paint paint the back of this butcher knife. It's like it's like you paint like you prime it black and you paint one part of it like the leg super fucking nice and yeah. then it's like you put it in the piece is called whip. Yeah, <laughs> it's like no, you call it British whip. British whip. <laughs> yeah. One thing is completed one hundred percent, and it looks fucking immaculate, yeah. and everything else is untouched. Yes, um, it's, I like that. It's like it's like the next level of painting the Space Marine on the sprue and not clipping them off the sprue. Yeah, it's it's like it's yeah, it's it's referential. It's like introspective. Yeah, yeah. Which for those that probably don't know about that, which is just fine. I don't expect you to. That there was in Crystal Brush. It was like two or three. You know, probably at this point, three or four years ago there was a piece entered in crystal brush that it was a space marine on the sprue not clipped off at all just a whole sprue and they had painted the miniature very well all in its sub pieces yeah and then everything else was the gray spruce sprue plastic so this is like next tier of that this is like oh i see what you did there i'm gonna i can do it different i kind of want to do that at golden demon it wouldn't take that long because this is one part of the model and it would right. really fuck with some people. Yeah. And I kind of look I'm, at this. I kind of into that. Look at this strong environmental lighting he did. It's almost pure <laughs> no, black. No, they would know immediately what I'm doing. Like they probably wouldn't even take it. They'd be like, what is this bullshit? I think, um, I think you'd make them take it. I, uh, they're kind of polite people. You Dude, know? Don't you know? Here, can I, say I had my own convention in Italy. Okay. Yeah. Was, you have to take my piece. You, have you ever heard of Miniacs Week? <laughs> Come it's on. A, it's a week all about me. I have a whole week. Uh, 
okay that that person who didn't paint the other half of that knife in that condition that the rest of the paint job really fucking good yeah really good um so yeah i just want to say that like it wasn't like a bad paint job it's like you clearly can paint the other half of the knife you just chose not to or maybe it ran out of time that's a possibility. So yeah, so not only was Scott building Deldar over the last three days, he also was judging this seated sit- like right seated right where the camera is right now, and I was like where Scott's sitting, and I was painting, and so I got to live me painting while Scott was just making like, huh, okay, yeah. huh. all right, uh, hmm. hmm, like that's what he did for a day, day straight, and then it click 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 it took a long time I gave like I gave like one to two paragraphs of you know feedback to each contestant and there were five sections with five finalists in each so 25 total it was a lot there was yeah beginner intermediate small intermediate large advanced that's four i lied you're a liar i feel like there was i feel like there's five it doesn't matter um but yeah it was uh it took a while cool but i'm happy i did it also in the newsy news there was an announcement that they are re-releasing kill team <laughs> With World orcs? War, World War Two themed edition. Yeah, with orcs and <laughs> Deathcore Krieg. Deathcore Krieg. Das Krieg. Yeah. So again, I am uh, faced with the situation where I have a long term video project based around a thing <laughs> that changed over the course of the project. <laughs> oh no! I just now realized that this is Guild Ball 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least the game's not dead. Um, well, the but, version that you played in the video is, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, we haven't played it yet, but I am not going to buy a new version of Kill Team and learn the new rules because the video isn't about the game and playing the game. Oh, sorry. Not about the rules of the game. It's more about the experience as a hobbyist and doing the whole process of painting a miniature, playing with mm-hmm. it. You could probably, it's probably likely to say that unless someone is an active Kill Team player, that they, in the way that you're choosing to approach this video, they wouldn't know that you're playing the old version versus the new version. Yes. Yes. Okay. Maybe, yeah, from the tabletop, it would not be obvious. Unless, okay. I, unless I show a rule book, which is likely to happen. Yeah, there's going to be some visual assets in there that may not be up to snuff. Yeah, it may not be the latest and greatest. But otherwise. So, yeah, the new new kill team. I didn't know old kill team was was, you know, bad and old and boring and new one was needed. But, hey, it was an excuse to... Sell more cardboard, sell more paper, and sell more plastic. It certainly could use a uh, rewrite on the rules just to make things more concise and clear. Yeah. The, uh, I remember reading it driving to Michigan, and I took a picture of a section that was describing stand and shoot, which is the idea that you can shoot someone when they charge you in a miniature war game. Um, and the way it was described was so ludicrous that I had to like document how ludicrous it was. Um, so like stuff like that could be, could be solved. And I think it's not necessarily GW's fault that these things are written so crazily because like, I feel like gamers sometimes have a tendency to try to find every single fucking loophole they can find to abuse a thing. Well, when a thing isn't, isn't definitive, yeah, isn't definitive ones and zeros, and there's any room for interpretation there there creates the a gap there yeah. and then you can how you interpret it you pick which side of the gap is more beneficial right um i'll say this i don't know if this is going to translate over to kill team but if i had to put money on it i would say yes it had will the new edition of age of sigmar 3.0 if you were to read through the rules they, they're I, like in from my perspective, the number one thing that they wanted to do to improve that game was to make those rules so much better defined, so much more tight, so much more clear and concise. The game is aside from one section in that rules, which is uh, awkward. Everything else is so freaking tight. Like they are making an, a really active decision to make this a strong part of how they're approaching their games moving forward so i think that's a good sign in theory for the the new addition to kill team that that might be a big thing that they are addressing with here like okay they did with that so i think it could be a great thing it could be a much better game in a, in a cleaner game and a quicker game like and that's the other thing that they did, did with the rules for age of sigmar they're making it more interactive more interesting when it's just when it's your opponent's turn for you to do things but also they're making rules decisions based on speed of playing to make it fun to keep playing. 
and not just like, all right, we're in the movement phase. I'll come back in 40 minutes once you're, all your dudes are moved. I uh, saw so you're so you're saying like the the, the the fact that Age of Sigmar has the ability for like the opponent to interact at more points during the enemy's turn that increases the level of interactivity mm -hmm. and uh, enjoyment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and the way that they decided to change how some rules, tweaking how some rules worked, sped up the game so you stayed in the fun parts and not the the dull parts that take a lot of take a lot of time when nothing's really happening. Okay. So I could see this as being a good thing for Kill Team, and you might actually take a look at those rules and find like, oh, geez, yeah, this is a better, cleaner, funner game. I so. yeah, I would hope so. I think that's a definitely a reasonable assumption. So. That is our news for the news section. Do, 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 do. Uh, All right, welcome to the end of the podcast. Thank you for hanging out and listening to us talk at you for uh, approximately an hour and a half. Uh, maybe an hour this time, maybe a little bit shorter. We never know. You're welcome, Amber. If we never know how shorter, long this podcast is. If it's longer, we're sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it, we, it could go either way at this point. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. And if you like the podcast and you want to support it, there are many ways that you can do it, uh, namely Patreon. And on Patreon, you get access to an extended episode, about 20, 30 minutes of extra content, where we talk about a favorite model that we have seen from another painter in the last two weeks. We talk about a, uh, a community submission from our patrons, give it feedback and uh, comments and critiques. And we also talk about a new thing that we tried out in the last two weeks and uh, the results of those new things. This week it was assembly oriented. Ooh, <laughs> riveting. <laughs> Very riveting. Well, yeah, well, there's some goodies though. Oh, some goodies right there. For it's, the peepees. I know. It's you, you, we, get, we get mental. Okay. Uh, so yeah, obviously as a patron, you can submit your models for feedback during an episode. And you can also uh, submit topics uh, for us to use in episodes. And we will likely uh, trash you while we talk about the topic because that's just, you know, <laughs> That's what we do, you know. Uh, other ways to support the podcast, you can buy a T-shirt from our Teespring. I got, I got a shirt on today. Hey, look at that it's a shirt. Um, you can find it linked in the show notes and in the description if you're on YouTube. Uh, other free ways you can watch the episodes without ads. Sorry, with ads. Um, you can do that by whitelisting it with your ad blocker or just turning off your ad blocker when you're on our channel. Um, you can also tell your nerd friends about our podcast and review us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Spotify, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, you got all of the things I think there. I did. I'm very good at shilling at the end. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. I don't know the song. No. no. It's Mississippi Queen. Hmm. Okay. I'm sure all the goody peepees know good old Mississippi Queen. I'm sure. This is the awkward part of the podcast where we have to say goodbye, but we're from the Midwest, so we don't know how to do that. <laughs> so we stand in your doorway and we talk about hot dish. <laughs> talk about the, the game. And Packers. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's Packers. Packers mug. Talk about the Packers. Anyway, <laughs> we best get going. Keep her moving. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, well, when am I going to see you next? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We should have a fish fry one of these nights, huh? Yeah. Got some bluegills down at the lake last Friday. Ain't going to eat themselves. <laughs> Until next time, we will catch you on the Flippity Vlop.